Campaigns are the bread and butter of marketers. Campaigns allow marketers to track their initiatives. And the campaign allows marketers to track various engagements, like emails, advertisements, face-to-face -face engagements, or targeted mailing blasts. They can also follow their effectiveness as they convert from leads to opportunities and hopefully sales. By tracking campaign influence, marketers can know whether their message and branding is successful enough to convert into sales. Campaigns can be individual or part of a greater hierarchy, like a family tree of campaigns that branches out. Let's take a look at the campaign in Salesforce. This is the campaign in the Lightning page. We can see that like our other pages, we also have a Highlights tab on the campaign or a Highlights component. This shows what they believe the default most relevant information to see on a campaign. You see we track the initiative type, like direct mail, the status, whether or not it's in progress or completed, the start date and the end date. It looks like this was a direct mail campaign that was completed that ran from January 20th to the 31st. We also have the campaign name and we could set whether or not it's an active campaign. This will control whether we can associate this campaign with campaign members or opportunities. We can also control the expected revenue, how much revenue we expect to gain in this campaign, and the response rate. So we set 15,000 in the campaign and 7% responded, netting us a 2,500,000. That's pretty good. You can see we also have the activity bar to track the activity of the campaign. The campaign has a few related objects. You'll see we have the campaign hierarchy. We mentioned that we can relate campaigns to other campaigns. We have opportunities. Campaigns can belong to opportunities. In fact, an opportunity can be associated to a campaign, and a campaign can have multiple opportunities. Remember our one-to-many relationship? Campaign members can contain either leads that are not converted or contacts. To add a lead or a contact, we just select Add Contacts and search for the contact you'd wish to add to this campaign. Of course, adding campaign members wouldn't likely be manually or manual. We'd use a data loading tool, which we'll learn about in another section. We can leave the member status as sent, meaning they've we've sent them a mail. And we'll go ahead and submit. So we see we have three campaign members. We can also associate opportunities or create new opportunities directly from the campaign. Let's see how this hierarchy works. We can select here to see our campaign hierarchy. Currently, we have only one campaign in the hierarchy, and that's the campaign we're working on. If we navigate to the details page and go ahead and search for a parent campaign, we'll call this campaign parent campaign. It's going to be uh, Type will be direct mail, and start date will be will be before the one that launched. And end date will be further out. Expense, expected revenue will be five million. And the budget cost will be 40,000. We don't know the actual cost because it has not yet completed. We'll expend, expect an overall response of 9%. And we don't know yet, but we'll target 300. And we'll actually set another parent campaign. Uh, we can't do so from here, so we'll just save this one here. and the parent campaign was related. If we navigate to the hierarchy, oops, 
let's first save our changes. If we navigate to the hierarchy, we can see that parent campaign resides over this campaign. So let's go ahead and create a parent campaign on the parent campaign, like an inception of campaigns. Go ahead and select this, create a new campaign. We'll call it grandparent campaign. And this will be direct mail, start date will be 2017 end date Active revenue will be 7 million oops 7 million budgeted costs and response and revenue 9% and thousand We'll go ahead and save, and we'll save the grandparent campaign. So if we look at the total hierarchy, we can see that the grandparent campaign has a parent has a child campaign, and the child campaign has a grandchild campaign. Everything rolls up from a reporting standpoint to the grandparent campaign, and this is the campaign hierarchy. We can also import campaigns by selecting the campaign member and import leads and contacts. This opens up the data import wizard, which we'll learn about in another section, but allows us to load a CSV and actually using the name of a contact or the lead or the email of the contact and the lead, we can add these existing records as members for a campaign. As an organization, you could also enable campaign influence. Campaign influence allows you to run campaign influence reports to see where exactly an opportunity or how an opportunity has been influenced by a particular campaign or a set of campaigns. To enable it, navigate to setup and under the feature settings marketing, campaign influence, and campaign influence settings, you can enable the campaign influence. As an organization, you could also enable campaign influence. Campaign influence allows you to run campaign influence reports to see where exactly an opportunity or how an opportunity has been influenced by a particular campaign or a set of campaigns. To enable it, navigate to Setup and under the Feature Settings, Marketing, Campaign Influence, and Campaign Influence Settings, you can enable the campaign influence. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add some products. And to do that, we're gonna navigate to the oh sorry we're going to navigate to app manager and you'll go all the way down and you'll see a little tiny icon called products in the classic version it had its own tab so i don't know why they chose to put it all the way down here in lightning but now you know where it is so you can see all the default products it's just like a regular object here's the records so we're going to add a new product and we're going to name this product um, let's see say we work at Bob's cooking equipment we'll call this product 20 inch frying pan we'll make it an active product product description it's pretty self-explanatory big ol' frying pan come on ff frying pan and product family we have none created so we'll just leave the default none we'll save a new let's add another product we'll call this 16 inch frying pan 
make it active, save and new, create a uh, griddle, electric, we'll do the active, and save. So if we go back and we take a look at our product list view, we can see these products. But you'll notice we don't see any prices here. It's strange. But we have a related list called price book that has prices. So it looks like prices is a separate object beyond product. And this is called price book. So we'll have to create a price book to store the prices for these products. We'll navigate to one of these related and add a standard price book. We can have the list price for the standard price book be $85 and we could use the standard price book. Oops. This would be an option, sorry, and it would only be selected if we had additional price books. We'd use another price book. Let's say we had different list prices depending on where it's sold. Um, maybe we can have an online list price and a retail list price. But for now, we'll just leave the standard list price. Go ahead and save. There we go. My price book has a standard price book price of $85. If we went on to navigate to the price book section, we'd again go to the app launcher, scroll down and navigate price books and we have the standard price book. We can create a new price book called overseas price book. We'll make this active and we're not going to make this the standard price book. I'll go ahead and save. All right, so once we have our two price books, let's go ahead and add some more products to this price book. You see I've added these, um, but well, that's weird. Let's go ahead and refresh that. Hope that doesn't happen again. Even the error messages look nicer on Lightning. So we'll go ahead and add these things, whatever these standard products are. We'll go ahead and next. But since the overseas price, we're going to make them half the price. Fifteen thousand. Go ahead and save. And those entries were added to this price book. So now, if I were to go ahead and navigate to an opportunity, uh, let's go to here. I'm going to go ahead and navigate back to this stage just because I'm too lazy, I don't want to create a new one. I'm going to remove the amount. Save, and I'm actually going to add products. So first I'm going to choose my price book. We have the standard, or we can choose the overseas ones. Looks like I forgot to activate the other price book, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. Overseas price book, active. And I'll go ahead and save that. Back to my opportunities. Back to products. Overseas price book. Save. And I'll add some of my products. We have all the products I added with the price book that includes its discount. Next, we'll leave it as the price book sales price. Go 
Put it as one. Save. And you can see we have all those products added with their quantity. And the amount was able to roll up. So both products and price books are really great tools if you have a standard list of products or even a changing list of products and prices that need to be controlled um, somewhere else rather than arbitrarily entered through the opportunity.